So for this episode of the Waterhouse series, I'm going to be taking you through how I do displacement. So for the brick material, we want to make sure that it's not just a flat surface. And this is really, really straightforward. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to bring this brick wall up now that we have a concrete kind of water nib there. And let's just bring this up to... I want to make sure that these two also have a um, a brick material on them too. So I'm just going to go set my TD, unwrap and everything, just like the other episodes. What I'm going to do is I am going to subdivide, subdivide this, actually just the, just the front service, subdivide. And I'm going to go 100. And then I'm also going to subdivide again twice. So we've just created all these tiny little subdivisions. And the reason why I do this over the subdivide modifier is because I just find the end result is a lot better. And I know it's annoying because it's a destructive workflow but it really does make a big difference. If you're using Polygon, you can literally just play around with the displacement strength and mid-level, and there should be like a displacement displacement node set up. Um, and if you're doing a normal material, you just wanna make sure you're in your material settings and you go to settings, surface, displacement, and bump, or just displacement only. But you wanna make sure that you've got displacement set up and you literally just have a, if you've got a displacement texture, you plug your height into height and then your displacement node goes into the displacement of the material output. Um, so if I just, am, and you'll only see this in the cycles view. What I do is I just go down to displacement strength. Let's just change this to like five and you can kind of see it actually working and it looks a little, a little wacky right now. But what I think I need to do is let's change the scale down to like 0 0.001, 0 0.001. And you can kind of see it can like just mellow out a little bit. So let's just change this displacement strength to like 10. And let's change the scale to 0 0.002. Um, and I think what we actually need to do is just make this scale a little bit more by subdividing it one more time and let's just see what the result is. And this is a very, very heavy method of actually displacing because like you're going to be introducing a lot of geometry and your computer might not be able to handle it. But you can see in that cross section we've got a nice kind of dip in there where the mortar meets the brick. So if we go back out of this view, you can see the difference that it makes. It just kind of reacts with the lighting a lot better. And I'm actually just going to do the same for these two interior walls. And you should actually see the difference a lot better. So if I just isolate those two, I'm going to remove these, actually no I don't need to, I don't think, um, no, I think that's alright. What I'm going to do is just subdivide these 100, uh, let's just do 200 times, I think, and let's just do, subdivide it one more time. I should just do two more times. Cool. That should be pretty good because we've already changed the um, the surface displacement on the shader. So let's just go back into Blender, uh, into the Cycles viewport mode, and let's unisolate that. And we should see some really, really nice variation. You can see where the glazing meets the wall as well it's just really really nice and it's quite a subtle effect but it does make a big difference um, in the overall 
silhouette of the object. You can kind of see where the bricks finish. You can see that really, really show. So I hope you've found this useful. Make sure to check out my Instagram at Oliver Higgins Architecture if you want to see the kind of work I do as a professional. And you can also check out my Discord. There's a link in the description. And you can share your work and get feedback from me and the community. And it's a great place to grow and learn as a 3D artist. So I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Cheers.